Good afternoon everyone out there in YouTube land. My name is Jared and this is my channel, Mazda B3K. In this video we're going to do an oil change on my brother's 2021 Kia K5 GT. Without further ado, let's get started. So for this video, in the interest of time, because we don't have a big window to film it, I'm going to let my brother take the lead on the wrenching, as he's done this before, as it's his vehicle. So, he'll do the wrenching, I'll do the camera work, and provide some of my normal scintillating commentary. One thing to note is, you're going to either need to raise the vehicle up on jack stands, or you're going to need to have ramps. We're using ramps, just remember with ramps, it does put your vehicle at an incline, so your oil is going to shift a little bit, so that's going to affect your oil level when you go to fill everything. So you'll need to check your level again once you get it flat on level ground, just to make sure your fill level is exactly where you want it to be. Okay. So, uh, for this car, you have an actually a filter basket that comes off, it's similar to a Toyota. Your filter, this is the only aftermarket filter I found for this vehicle because it's so new. If you can't find the Napa Gold 100 514, call up your Kia dealer. They'll give it to you. I should note that Napa Gold is also essentially Wix. The, uh, so. It's not just the cartridge filter. You get a shiny new cartridge filter. You get a new gasket and you get a new crush washer for your drain plug. You also get a new plug for the oil filter basket. This thing is so you can you can remove it and you can drain the filter basket before you actually take the filter basket off. And this will make it way less messy. Screwdriver to pop out. There's a bunch of these little trim tabs down there that you gotta pop out. You're also gonna need a 10 millimeter socket. 27 millimeter socket for the filter basket itself and an 8 millimeter allen key for the filter basket drain plug the filter lives behind this cover and your drain plug is back here under that cover these two metal bolts are 10 millimeter they don't have to be super tight. They're just holding the plastic cover. They're not captive. They will come all the way out. Also, be prepared to have sand fly in your face. It is the way of things. Okay, once you got your bolts out, you can get your, I like to use a screwdriver, a small screwdriver, and just pry these pull tabs out to their I'm coming out position. Um, don't kill them, because they will break. And once they break, they're kind of obnoxious to replace. There we go. You see how that lifted out? Dumped all that nice sand all over me. So that's one of two. And just, you know, wiggle your screwdriver in there. Don't force it. You know, if it won't go one way, come around and attack it from a different way. You see? You got that little lift right out. Once you got them lifted, gently pull. Let's see how they work. When you push this flat in, it spreads those prongs and makes it hold. Like a drywall anchor, if you've ever you've seen one of those. Come on, there you go. There we go. Now that that's out, this door will open right up. And there's your oil filter 
basket right here. See, there's your drain plug right there. Take your 8mm Allen wrench, drag your oil pan over, pull that bad boy out, and it will drain all the oil that's up in the valve galleries. Keeps it from falling all over you when you start to spin this thing back out. Now that I've got that door out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and remove these other tabs the same way for the door blocking the drain plug. And again, I'm not using a lot of force on these. I'm just kind of coaxing them out. You know, saying, you know, give it sweet nothing. Try to avoid four letter words. There we go. And as they come out, good rule of thumb is support your plastic shield so you don't put a lot of horizontal torque on your little uh, retention tab here because they're not that strong uh, and you don't want to break them if you can help it i'm not sure why i have pink sand under here i have to make sure i don't have a more interesting leak this car has been at the dealer so i have to figure out what they didn't do right Ugh. And then that just slips over that little cross member there. You see how this has got a little hook? You got a little hook here. And it slides up over this piece here. And that's where one of your 10 mil bolts threads through. But now that we've got that off, slide it out to the side. Get these little push things up my way. A so. uh, little tidbit something to avoid you should always do this anyway but on this engine and it really matters because this crankcase is sealed up good it's turbo pull that so when you open your drain plug it has somewhere to let air in otherwise it glug glugs like when you dump a soda bottle out this drain bolt is a 17 millimeter <clears throat> and because you're going to get a shiny new crush washer don't try to murder this thing when you put it back on the crush washer does the sealing for you Otherwise, the poor guy that comes behind you, which is probably you if you're watching this video, is going to really curse the guy that did it before. It's like, what was he thinking? Way too tight. There we go. Good and dark. Got about 6,000 miles on this oil. This vehicle, you have to stay on top of the oil changes because it is direct injected. And you get fuel contaminating the oil. So you run too long, you end up with thin oil, thin oil, uh, unless the engine is designed to run the thin oil, is not a good thing. This being a pretty hot turbo, they want at least a 30 weight in it, so you put fuel in it so much and it cuts down to a 20, well, you're out of warranty, aren't you? Just about got everything drained out here. It's down to just a trickle. I wiped off my drain bolt, put my new crush washer on. And here's Ooh. Spin it on. And then figure out where you put your ratchet. Which I think, there we go. Like I said, don't be that guy that gets excited and kills these things. They don't have to be that tight because you're using a fresh crush washer, which is what does all the sealing for you. So you crush it a little bit, and that's good. Now we move on up to the filter. The filter... You're going to need an 8 millimeter Allen key. And you're going to need a 27 millimeter socket to fit on the big bolt head. So bring your pan up. As soon as you start cracking this little drain plug, it starts leaking. And 
it doesn't take a lot. Bonus points if you drop your Allen key into the oil pan. There we go. Okay, I guess that guy did it. Warmer. <sighs> so, first rule of dealing with plastic is do not over torque it. If you over torque it, you will be buying yourself a new plastic widget. Alright, so that came out good. Now we do the service out from under the vehicle. Okay, so the filter just kind of snaps in and out. I have just pulled this out of the vehicle. You see I spun that back in just enough to uh, stop it dripping all over my socket. Um, you get a new one, which I have misplaced. Again, okay, there it is. So, step one, replace this thing. Uh, I suppose you could probably get away with it. But why? They give you a new one as part of the price of a filter. We'll loosen that. Spin her back in. And you just have to get it flush. There's an O-ring on it that is doing the sealing. And like I said, first rule of plastics, you don't want to over torque. So. That one's done. Second thing you have to do on this style of filter. So there's some sediment in the bowl. See it? Yeah, not much, but yeah. Mmm. That's great. So I've seen that. I'm going to do the best I can to completely wipe this bowl out because I don't want anything sitting in here. I mean, that and could have been generated whenever the the coil ground was walking itself around. I and know. all sorts of funny, interesting things. Yeah, this car has been abused by our local dealership here. Um, I cannot properly tell the story without using... Uh, what do they call it? Family unfriendly language. Yep. So. But in the TLDR, the short run is that it had to go to the dealer for, I think, four discrete repairs. And most each... of which were dealer inflicted. Yeah, I went. I went there with a bad AC. They replaced a relay. AC worked fine for a couple days, and turned out to be the harness, and they didn't do the harness right, and that broke some other stuff, and it was just on and on and on. This mechanic kept doing horrible things. Okay, last piece that you replace, they give you a new seal. This is, this, this is the seal that seals this bolt to the block, all right? It has a little tab on it. You grab the little tab, fish it right out should just be laying in there make sure you change this plug and this seal they come with the filter so make sure the little tab faces up so you can fish it out again it's gonna lay it in there you don't really have to push it hard it just kind of sits in there 
Now that's good. Take your new filter, snaps in. Now you're ready to go back under the car, spin this up, and then uh, go ahead and close up your bottom plates, fill it with oil, and you're almost done. Make sure your threads are clean. Spin it up there. And then take your tool. 27 millimeter socket. And run it until you feel it bottom. That's pretty snug. Now I can throw some oil on this bad boy and do a leak test. So beauty cover comes off. And here's your fill. Now the manual calls for 0W30. That's pretty hard to find. What I use instead, after consultation with some folks that I am confident know their oil chemistry, I participate in an online forum that has people that actually work in the lubrication industry. So I use a Euro oil, Mobile One 0W40. This actually is just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit thicker than a 5W30. And once it's been diluted a little bit, it is a 5W30. Well, it's a 0W30. Anyway, I feel like this provides superior protection. And if you disagree, feel free to bleep bloop and tell me how I'm an idiot. But I've done quite a bit of research, so everyone's entitled to their opinion. This is a six quart fill, so it'll be one jug plus a little bit. Well, you probably can hear it spinning down, but we just ran the car briefly to do a leak check. And there are no new oil stains on the floor. Most of these are from a, a different project. So we're looking good. Looks like everything's nice and tight. So it's just a matter of putting on uh, service covers and beauty covers and buttoning everything. Right halfway up. Yeah, that one's actually pretty easy to read. Yeah, right in the middle of the butter zone. Right. I'm going to leave it exactly right there. Because I dropped six. What will happen is if the fuel gets extra diluted, you may actually see your oil level increase. Um, but that's extreme cases. You know, you're running 87, driving down the road in a giant headwind, and, and just having to work really hard to keep from knocking. And it runs real rich, which ends up with a lot of fuel in the oil over time. You can actually see the oil volume increase. There, I believe there are some recalls. Honda had some issues. Uh, but I'm leaving it right in the middle, because that's where the manufacturer wants it. And I generally do what the manufacturer wants and enjoy good service. For my durable equipment all right guys that's going to do it for this episode oil change on my brother's 2021 kia k5 gt so as always please leave a comment i like to read them i like to reply to them i like to learn from them please also like share subscribe that helps the channel grow and lastly i make the mistakes well, really, we make the mistakes, but you don't have to. 
I'll see you guys next episode.